foreign hunting season. At least once a year, I try to travel up to Maine and rent an Airbnb to go hunting. I never bought my own place because I can't really afford it just for a single trip every year. So doing a weekend rental makes more sense for me. Plus, I'm not exactly an expert. I'm still trying to gain more experience. Some years, I'd go with my uncle. But in recent years, he hasn't been in the best shape health-wise. He's not really up to it anymore, so I've been going alone more recently. Last year, which was 2022 at the time I'm writing this, was the last season that I went hunting. It was November. The Airbnb I rented was near a national park. I arrived late on a Friday because I had to come home from work, get ready, and then head out on the road trip. When I pulled up into the long stretch of private dirt road to get to the cabin type Airbnb, it was pitch black outside and it was dead silent too. This time of year, there's obviously no bugs or crickets left. So the nights are dead silent and dark up there, especially if the place you're staying is secluded like this one. I pulled up as close as I could to the cabin and the owner told me the key would be hidden under the mat. Sure enough, it was there. I brought my two bags inside the cabin and unpacked my things onto the bed in the one bedroom. It was a very cozy cabin, and the owner already had the heat turned up for me, which was nice. Maine gets pretty cold up there in November. There was cable and Wi-Fi in this Airbnb, so I set an alarm to get an early start at dawn, which, in my opinion, is the best time to find deer, or even moose, if you're lucky. The next morning, I was up as soon as my alarm went off, and I was out in the woods in less than half an hour. Since this was foreign territory to me, I posted up behind a blowdown I found, some knocked over trees. Usually, this would now be a waiting game, but I heard a man's voice call from behind me. I had a mini heart attack and turned around to see some men with gray hair but who looked like he was only 50. He was approaching me slowly. He said slowly in a very angry sounding voice, what the hell are you doing here? I responded, excuse me. He said, hunting is restricted here. I actually was unaware of this. When I explained this to him, he said, I watched you right up here. You best leave the way you came. This scared me. I said, what do you mean you watched me right up here? He told me he always sees people riding up to that cabin, always out of town folks who come up here for the wrong reasons. I apologized to him and told him I'd leave. I grabbed my things and started walking back the way I came. When I looked behind me, the man was gone out of sight. I walked back to the cabin then took my car and drove to a different park that, according to some, tooth. I quickly realized this was no coincidence. Someone had indeed been in my cabin without my knowledge. I sternly demanded an explanation from the man, asking him why he was in my cabin and why he had been hiding in the closet. He mumbled something about wanting to teach me a lesson claiming that outsiders were not welcome in these parts. I insisted that I had the right to be there, having rented the cabin legally, and I was simply there for the hunting season. The man's demeanor shifted from arrogance to aggression. He took a step toward me, and in response, I raised my gun, reminding him of the consequences if he didn't back off. His smile faded, and he muttered something about how I didn't belong there before finally turning and leaving the room. I was both furious and terrified. I considered calling the authorities, but hesitated, not wanting to deal with the complications it might bring. Instead, I decided to leave the cabin immediately. I packed up my belongings in a hurry, 
constantly checking my surroundings, half expecting the man to return with others. Once everything was in my truck, I drove away from the cabin, leaving the unsettling encounter behind. I found another place to stay for the night, still shaken by the intrusion. The next day, I reported the incident to the local authorities, providing them with a description of the man. They assured me they would look into it, but I couldn't shake off the feeling of violation and unease. From that experience, my annual hunting trip took on a new perspective. I became more cautious, always double-checking the security of my accommodations. The incident served as a stark reminder that even in the vast and quiet wilderness, unforeseen dangers could lurk, and not all encounters would be with the wildlife. Toward my father's stand, the path seemed to parallel my own, which increased my unease. As I approached my father's stand, I saw his silhouette against the fading daylight. I quickly explained what I had observed near my blind, emphasizing the peculiar wide path through the leaves. My father, experienced in these woods, grew concerned and suggested we pack up and head back to camp. We gathered our things in haste, constantly scanning the surroundings for any signs of wildlife. My cousin, who had been unaware of my encounter, questioned our abrupt departure. My father assured him it was just getting too dark for hunting. As we made our way back to camp, my father shared his suspicion that it might have been a predator marking its territory. He recounted stories of wolves and bears doing such things. The idea of a large predator in close proximity sent shivers down my spine. Back at camp, we secured our firearms and reinforced the perimeter. The night passed without incident, but the next morning, we discovered large paw prints around my blind. It confirmed our fears. A sizable predator had indeed been there. The incident left a lasting impression on me, emphasizing the unpredictability of the wilderness. It also highlighted the importance of being vigilant, especially during the early dark hours of a northern Michigan winter. From that day forward, my hunting trips carried an added layer of awareness, a reminder that in the vast expanse of nature, you're not always the apex predator, the thrill of the hunt. We arrived at the ranch and settled into the cabin we always stayed in. It was a cozy place, filled with the scent of cedar and the memories of countless hunting trips. The first evening, we gathered around the fireplace, cleaning our guns and sharing stories. The excitement in the air was palpable, and I couldn't wait for the next morning. Dawn broke, and we were out in the fields before the sun could fully rise. I set up in my favorite spot, a tree stand that had seen many successful hunts over the years. The morning passed without much action, but the anticipation kept me alert. As the day progressed, I moved to different spots, hoping for a better vantage point. In the late afternoon, while perched in a stand overlooking a meadow, I saw movement in the distance. My heart raced as a magnificent buck emerged from the woods. It was a moment of pure exhilaration as I aimed, took a deep breath, and pulled the trigger. The shot rang out echoing through the quiet wilderness. The buck dropped, and I felt a surge of pride and accomplishment. My grandpa and dad rushed over, congratulating me on a great shot. We took pictures, and I couldn't wait to share the story with everyone back home. The evening was spent processing the deer and enjoying a hearty meal. As the night fell, we gathered around the fire again, reliving the day's triumph. Little did I know that this hunting trip would become a cherished memory, a tale I'd recount with pride in the years to come. The camaraderie, the thrill of the hunt, and the 
connection with nature made it a weekend I'd always treasure. And so the tradition continued, weaving new chapters into the tapestry of our family's hunting legacy. The field, a dark figure standing there. My heart raced, and I strained my eyes to get a clearer view. As the first light of dawn broke, the figure became more distinct. It was a large, dark creature standing on two legs. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. It wasn't any animal I could recognize, and its shape was unlike anything I had encountered in the wild. Fear gripped me as the figure started moving towards the tree line, disappearing into the woods. I couldn't shake the memory of the scream from the previous night. Panic set in, and I considered climbing down from the blind and heading back to camp. However, the seasoned hunter in me resisted. I reminded myself that fear could play tricks on the mind, and it was essential to stay calm. My dad and grandpa were counting on me to hold my position, and abandoning the blind wouldn't serve any purpose. I sat there, eyes fixed on the woods, rifle in hand. The figure didn't reappear, and as the light increased, I could see more clearly. Eventually, the sun fully rose, revealing the landscape. The field appeared normal, with no sign of the mysterious creature. When my dad joined me later, I cautiously mentioned what I had seen. He listened, a serious expression on his face. We decided to keep an eye out for any unusual activity, but continued with our hunting plans. The rest of the day went by without incident, and we returned to camp in the evening. The others hadn't seen anything unusual either. We debated whether it could have been a wild animal or perhaps someone playing a prank. The scream remained unexplained, adding an air of unease to the otherwise familiar hunting grounds. That night, we kept a watchful eye on the surroundings, taking turns staying awake. Nothing out of the ordinary occurred. And as the sun rose on the final day of our hunting trip, the atmosphere seemed to return to normal. As we packed up to leave, the mystery of the scream and the dark figure lingered in our minds. We never encountered anything like it again, but the memory served as a reminder that even in the familiar, to keep the power on, and that sometimes meant dealing with issues deep in the woods. One evening, I got a call about a power outage on the outskirts of town. It was already dark when I set out, Armed with my trusty flashlight and a sense of familiarity with the dense forest, I reached the area, and the silence of the woods was broken only by the occasional rustling of leaves and the distant hum of the town. As I approached the malfunctioning power lines, I heard a low, guttural growl that sent shivers down my spine. I chalked it up to a stray animal perhaps a bear or a coyote, and continued my work. The growling persisted, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Suddenly, the forest seemed to come alive with strange noises, unlike anything I'd heard before. Branches snapped, leaves crunched, and an eerie howl echoed through the trees. I felt a chill running down my spine, but I tried to dismiss it, as the product of an overactive imagination. As I worked on the power lines, my flashlight illuminated a pair of glowing eyes staring at me from the shadows. Panic set in, and I fumbled for my radio to call for backup. The creature, whatever it was, moved closer, and I could now make out its silhouette in the darkness. It was large, towering on two legs, with fur that seemed to blend seamlessly with the night. Fear gripped me as I realized it wasn't any animal I could identify. The creature let out a bone-chilling howl, and my instincts kicked in. I dropped my tools and sprinted back towards the town. 
As I ran, the creature followed, its haunting cries echoing through the woods. I reached the edge of the forest, and the town's lights provided some solace. The creature stopped at the tree line, watching me from the shadows. I reported the incident to my colleagues and the local authorities, but they dismissed it as a wild animal encounter. Still, the memory of those glowing eyes and the unearthly howls lingered in my mind. I never ventured deep into the woods alone again, and the once tranquil sanctuary became a place tinged with an unsettling sense of the unknown. Way back in the dark, the evening started off peacefully. The woods were alive with the sounds of nature, and I felt a sense of tranquility as I waited for the elusive deer. The sun began its descent, casting a warm glow over the landscape. As darkness set in, I became more attuned to the subtle movements and sounds around me. The rustle of leaves, the distant calls of nocturnal creatures, all part of the familiar symphony of the forest. I remained still, my bow at the ready, anticipating the approach of any unsuspecting deer. It was around 6.30 p.m. when I heard a distinct snap of a twig, a sound that immediately heightened my senses. I strained my eyes to pierce the darkness, trying to discern any movement. The woods seemed to hold its breath for a moment, and then, there it was. A shadowy figure emerged from the tree line. My heart quickened as I focused on the silhouette. At first, I assumed it was a deer, but something felt off. The figure was upright, too tall and elongated to be a typical whitetail. It moved with an unsettling grace, and I began to question my initial assessment. As the figure drew closer, I could see it more clearly. It was not a deer, nor any creature I could readily identify. Its movements were deliberate, almost human-like, but there was an otherworldly quality to it. My instincts screamed at me to stay hidden, to observe from the safety of my stand. The figure paused, standing in the moonlit clearing, and turned its head towards me. In that moment, I felt a chill run down my spine. Its eyes, reflective in the dim light, seemed to lock onto mine. Fear gripped me as the creature emitted a low, guttural growl, a sound that resonated through the stillness of the night. I remained motionless, bow gripped tightly in my hands. The creature, whatever it was, continued to stare for what felt like an eternity. Then, with an eerie swiftness, it turned and disappeared into the darkness, leaving me in a state of bewilderment. As the night wore on, I debated whether to abandon my stand and make a hasty retreat. The forest, once a sanctuary, now felt cloaked in uncertainty. With each passing moment, I questioned what I had witnessed. A mysterious figure that defied the norms of the woodland. When morning arrived, I descended from my stand my senses on high alert. The woods, now bathed in the soft light of dawn, seemed serene once more. I retraced my steps, finding the reflective tape that marked my trail. The journey back through the thicket was uneventful, yet the memory of that night lingered, casting a shadow over my beloved hunting grounds. To this day, the encounter remains an enigma. Was it a trick of the imagination? A creature unknown to science? Or something else entirely? I continue to cherish the woods, but the sense of safety and familiarity has been forever altered by the presence of that mysterious figure in the night. Standing there hand in hand, the girl looked like she was in her early twenties, and the guy looked a little older. I stopped about 15 yards away, 
and ask them what they were doing out here in the dark. Dressed like that, the guy in a long trench coat and the girl in a summer dress. They just stood there and looked at me, not saying a word. The guy looked really thin and kind of sickly, and the girl looked completely normal, but the look on her face was vacant, like she wasn't all there. I asked again what they were doing, and if they needed help, the guy then spoke in a shaky voice and said, we're just taking a walk, don't mind us. It was the strangest thing. Their presence and the way they looked didn't match the situation. I felt a chill down my spine. Something felt off. I decided it was best to leave. So I circled around them, keeping my distance, and made my way towards the trail. As I walked away, the eerie feeling persisted and I couldn't shake the image of those two standing there in the moonlight. Once I reached the trail, I picked up my pace, glancing back periodically. They remained standing in the same spot, watching me. The thicket seemed denser now, and I hurried through it, every rustle of leaves making me uneasy. When I finally reached my three-wheeler, I wasted no time getting out of there. I drove back home with a mix of confusion and apprehension. Who were those people? And what were they doing in the woods at that hour, dressed so strangely? The encounter haunted my thoughts for weeks. I debated reporting it to the local authorities, but couldn't articulate what exactly had transpired. It remained a bizarre and unsettling memory one that added a layer of unease to the familiar woods I once considered my refuge. From that day forward, I approached my hunting spots with extra caution, always mindful of the unexpected. The woods, once a source of solace, now held a lingering sense of mystery, a reminder that even in the familiar, the unknown could manifest in the most unsettling ways. To your surroundings, the strange encounter with those two individuals, their unusual behavior, and the subsequent discovery of roofing nails in your truck's tires raise numerous questions and add an eerie layer to your experience. The woods, once a place of solace and tranquility, became tainted by an unsettling presence the feeling of being watched and the deliberate act of puncturing your tires hint at something more than a chance encounter. It's a reminder that even in the seemingly familiar, there can be hidden dangers and mysteries that elude easy explanation. The woods, with their quietude and shadows, can hold secrets that disturb the peace we seek in nature. The decision to no longer go alone and to avoid parking in remote areas reflects a prudent shift in approach. Sometimes, these unexplained events prompt us to alter our habits and routines. A self-preservation instinct that acknowledges the potential dangers lurking in the unknown. Though the identity and motives of those two individuals remain elusive, their presence left a lasting imprint on your perception of the woods. The forest, with its timeless beauty, can also harbor enigmas that challenge our sense of safety and understanding. Your experience serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder that the line between the known and the unknown can blur in the quiet expanses of the wilderness. The woods may always hold a touch of mystery, but by adapting and staying vigilant, we can continue to find solace and joy in the outdoor spaces we cherish.